What's up, Forerunners? In this video, we're looking at five different ways of achieving a parallax effect using React.js. Parallax is an effect where things in the background, elements, items are moving at different rates than elements in the foreground. And this effect is very useful for adding a sense of immersion or dimensionality to your scene, to what would otherwise be boring or static content. This effect can be very overused, so my recommendation is to use it sparingly, and doing so will really make it pop when you do use this effect. So as always, source code is going to be down in the description if you're curious. So let's dive right into some examples. Example number one the fixed background parallax effect. So this effect is the simplest one to pull off. All this does is set the background static compared to the foreground, which scrolls across the screen. All that we really need to do here is to set a background attachment of fixed. The way that we pull this off is simply to set a background image on, well, what I did was set a background image on a div tag and then add some CSS to style this thing accordingly. So image background in this case would give it a background attachment of fixed, alter its background position, and also set a background size of cover. And that's it. So this is all CSS pretty much. Easy peasy. Example number two is the scroll background parallax effect. This is the effect where the image in the background is going to be moving at a different speed, a different rate than elements in the foreground, like the whoa text. What's cool about this is that we can vary the speed at which this slows. So this is going to make more for a much more subtle effect. So the camera barely moves as the overlaid text moves on top of it. So I'm all for those, you know, subtle effects that you kind of don't really notice, but more feel rather than see. The way that we pull this off is back here in our example scroll background component, which is just a container for housing everything. I have the same image component that I'm using here, but as you can notice, we're not passing in a fixed prop. So in this image component, in this ternary op, we're going to evaluate to the false condition for fixed. And this is going to return this image tag, which has a class of image behind. All image behind is doing is positioning a relative, adding a set width, height auto, and removing any margin or padding. So it's not really doing much. And the meat of this really is we're setting the transform translate dynamically for this image tag. This delta y, we are calculating that in a nutshell, we're getting the ref of the box, which is the parent container here. And with that box, we're calculating its position. Basically from that box position, we are calculating the percentage that we've progressed through that box and we're doing some math to figure out the translate for that image so that we come up with this cool effect. Now, real quick, the way that this works, let's assume for a second that the viewport is the blue box here and that our parallax background is here in the pink box. But actually, the only thing that we'll be able to see of the image, the bounding box, shall we say, is gonna be these, this green image box here. So as we scroll, you can see that the image box comes into view, but our parallax background is moving at a different speed than our viewport, giving that nice effect. One other thing to note is that when the viewport is at the very top, the parallax background is lined up with the image box at its bottom. But when we have scrolled all the way down, the parallax background is lined up with the image box at the top edge. So we can also reverse this effect as well, which leads us to our next effect, scroll reversed parallax. So not super original, but this is the same effect, but in reverse. And the way that we pull this off is simply to invert the speed prop that we pass to the component. Where'd it go? So here inside of my example scroll background rev component, really original name there, we have our image component and all we're really doing to achieve the reverse effect is negating the speed. So we just had a speed of negative one and those maths that I figured out accommodate that speed to be either positive or negative. 
Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you set a speed greater than one, then it has unintended consequences. So you have like images that can be going out of bounds and stuff. So one thing to keep note of as we're messing with the speed prop here. All right, the fourth application for Parallax Effect in React is animated text. Now, some sticklers are going to say that this isn't technically Parallax, but I disagree. I, th I think that Parallax can also apply to things that are being animated dynamically for scroll input or other user input like mouse positioning. So it's, a, it's still a cool effect regardless of whether it's pedantically correct or not. Anyways, this is some um, effect that you can add using React as well. And these items are moving dynamically based on the scroll position as I scroll up and down. Now, the way that I pulled this off was to add a global hook. And this, in this hook, I add a listener for the window resize and window scroll events. And then on those events, when they fire, they're basically going to request an animation frame, which calls my on tick function. And basically what that is doing is is ensuring that we don't fire this thing any more than once every 16 milliseconds or so or once every frame assuming that a frame is 60 frames per second so we do the math here 1 over 60 is going to be uh, 0.016 which is 16 milliseconds 16.6 .6 repeating anyways a lot of math there um this is our global handler so to speak now, in my example scroll text, I have this parent component, which is my scrollable area. I want this to represent the area in which I can scroll. And then this control translate, based on whatever the scroll percentage through this area is, we're gonna go from X to X. So we can go from negative 30 and translate it to positive 30. Also, accordingly, we can control the rotate as well and go from negative 30 degrees to zero. And then we can nest translate and rotate together to achieve translation and rotation at the same time. So that's basically how we come up with this scrollable effect. Now you might ask how we pull that off. Well, basically scrollable area does some calculations, figures out what the scroll progress percentage is through this area. And then it passes that number down through React context down to its children. So as we can see in control translate, that's going to be consuming this context as percentage progress. And we can optionally apply easing for some uh, more smooth transitions for the beginning and ending of that animation. Um, by the way, percentage progress is going to go from zero to one. So start is assuming that we have not scrolled through the section at all. Is that zero? And then one is going to represent that we've have scrolled all the way through our scrollable area. And so we can animate this thing accordingly from the start, whatever our start params or start props are to our end props. And then here we have our X and Y, which are gonna be controlled from that scroll progress. And that hopefully is a very simple explanation for how I was able to pull off translating and rotating these things based on the scroll position. Last but not least, certainly, is the animated scene. This is gonna be choppy, by the way, due to my video streaming software, so please bear with this. It's actually smoother when not streaming this. But this is a way to animate a whole scene of stuff. You have a bunch of elements on the screen that are being animated at the same time. So we have these mountains, and as we scroll down, they move at different rates, giving this illusion of depth, this dimensionality. And also, this is tethered to the mouse position as well. So I can kind of like pan around the scene here, make things kind of move around relative to each other. So this is kind of a fun little cool scene that I was able to, uh, to build using those same components that I just showed earlier. So this is my animated scene. I'm using the same components here I used before. So my scrollable area, and then I have my sky, my clouds, mountains, tree line, foreground. All right, and down below, I'm, I'm actually using that control translate component that I showed earlier to control the positioning, to control the translation of some clouds. I'm using that same thing to control the positioning of some trees. 
Um, but yeah, it was pretty straightforward to set up. You know, have scroll from, scroll to. So uh, I like it when props are easy to reason about. Makes it easier to build nice interactive scenes like this one. So that's five ways to add a little bit of immersion and interactivity to your website. Um, source code is down in the description. All the code examples, all that stuff. Um, it's there for you to use if you want to. If you do end up using this, uh, let me know. I'd be curious to see what you build and what you come up with. Like and subscribe only if you like this content and want to help other people find this sort of thing too if you found this helpful. I'm Don from Forerunner Dev. Let's code the universe.